Well, hey, good morning. You got yourself a new steel MS261 chainsaw. I wanna go over some of the basic maintenance operation, kind of how to's with the chainsaw. So first of all, before I start on the chainsaw, I wanna cover a couple quick things. This is steel mix oil. It's called the HP Ultra. This right here is for one gallon of gas. So you take this bottle, dump it in with one gallon of fresh ethanol free fuel. And that's the gas you're gonna run. The other item you're gonna need is some bar oil. And we have this in a couple different styles, but right here is the steel woodcutter bar oil. Every time you put gas in the tank, you put bar oil in the tank. And that lubricates the bar and chain. Side note, moto mix. Anytime that this saw is gonna hibernate, it is best to run moto mix into the fuel system. It's gonna protect the carburetor and the fuel lines and ultimately lead to your success with the chainsaw, making sure that you're a happy steel chainsaw owner. Okay, so here's your steel MS-261. Let's go ahead and take off the bar cover. Let's start at the front end. Let's start with this chain right here. So as you use a chainsaw, the chain is going to stretch. What will happen is it stretches as it'll start to sag. You'll see some, some space between the bar and the chain. That is not good. We need to keep that chain properly tensioned. So to properly tension a steel chain, I'm gonna take my bar wrench, which came with the saw. I'm gonna loosen these bar nuts right here, about a turn or so. Something cool about the MS-261 is these bar nuts are what we would call captive, so I cannot lose them. I take them loose all the way, but they're retained in the cover. To tension the chain, there's a little screw right here between the two bar nuts. I'm gonna take my bar wrench, take the flat tip, and I'm going to turn clockwise to put more tension on the chain, counterclockwise to put less tension on the chain. So by the book, when you're tensioning a chain, you'd have this thing sitting flat on the table, and as soon as in the middle of the bar, the chain drivers, which is the links that tie the chain together, touches the bottom of the bar, you go a half a turn more. At that point in time, we hold up on the bar and we retighten the bar nut. Okay, so that's chain tension. The saw also has a chain brake. That is this lever right here. Right now the brake is off. You'll see the chain can spin. Now the brake is on, that chain is locked. Okay, the point of that is to protect you. So if you were making a cut, traditionally with the tip, you have the risk of kickback. And when a saw kicks back, means it does that and it comes back fast enough and it hits your wrist and it engages the brake. I also recommend the brake every time that I start a chainsaw. Okay, so let's go to starting of this chainsaw. Nope, nope, let's back up. How do we put gas and oil in this saw? So the steels have these cool little flip top caps right here for the fuel, right here for the bar oil. And I take and I flip up the black side like that and I give it a half a turn and it pulls up. So that's where my gas is gonna go. I mix fuel and flip up the black side on this. And this is where my bar oil is going to go. Okay, starting. Get a good shot of the back here. This is what they call their master control switch. I'm going to squeeze the throttle. So hand on the top, squeeze the throttle, push down on this master control switch to the start position. I'm going to engage the brake. And now, back up far enough, I pull the rope. Back up. The MS-261 has a compression relief. If I push this in like that, you heard that click, it's gonna make this saw easier to pull over. A little easier on your shoulder, okay? So push the compression release in, set the brake all the way down on the master control switch. Pull the rope, one, two, and generally it's starting on the third pull and it's gonna be running at kind of a weird rough idle. At that point in time, I click the trigger and you'll see this switch is gonna move up. Bam, it returns to the idle or run position. I now can take off the brake and go to work. Right here, there's one, two, three screws. And if I take that cover off, 
that accesses the air filter and the spark plug and the whole top of the engine. It is best to probably check that filter every 20 hours. It is a cleanable filter. You can tap it out. You can also wash it out and then let it dry. Okay. What else do we need to know about this saw? We talked a little bit about the safety with the brake. I also want to point out chaps. These are very important guys. Uh, I get pictures every year from people showing damage to legs. Uh, not a good picture. Chainsaws are very dangerous, yet they're very useful tools. So don't be scared of a chainsaw. Just go into a chainsaw with proper respect and understanding of what damage it can do and look to get a pair of chaps. As soon as the chain touches these chaps, it rips through the outer layer of material and then it shreds and that shredding binds the chain up almost immediately. It's gonna save you a trip to the emergency room and nobody wants to spend their Saturdays in an emergency room, especially right now with this coronavirus going on. Recap, chain tension, brake on, brake off, fuel, oil, master control switch, down, two to three pulls to start it, Blip the trigger, it's going to return to run. And then to shut this saw off, I forgot about that, you just push up and it kills it. Cool thing about a 261 is it returns to run. So now that it's warm, I can actually pull the rope and it's going to fire back up. Two proper ways to start a chainsaw. One is the leg lock like this, so it's locked between my knees. And the other one would actually be to get on the ground, put your foot in here, and pull the rope from that position. All right, if you have any other questions, reach out to us, shoot an email to Josh at Carl's Mower and Saw. We look forward to you enjoying your new steel MS-261 chainsaw.